The information and opinions expressed in this program are provided by independent Enagic distributors. They are provided for informational purposes only. The opinions are not those of Enagic USA, its officers or directors. Individual results will vary. Welcome to this edition of Kangen One Straight Talk, candid conversations about Enagic and their amazing products, along with powerful tips designed to help you grow your business. During the next few minutes, you'll hear from some of the most successful distributors in the U.S. as they share some of their marketing ideas and secrets to success in a roundtable discussion. Now let's join one of the country's fastest-growing Enagic distributors, Daniel D. McCauley, as he shares his thoughts and ideas to help you get to 6A and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel D. McCauley. Hi, it's my pleasure to be here today with a couple of experts in the animal world and a good friend of mine, Neil Panella. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Richard Detour, owner of Olympic event horses, uh, thoroughbred race horses, and numerous other animals, and Jeff Jensen, a nutritional and therapy expert with over 50 years of success working with Grand Prix, jumpers, and race horses around the world, including Breeders' Cup champions and Olympians. Gentlemen, welcome. And also, uh, my friend Neil Panella, uh, former attorney and today working the Enagic program, and by the way, one of the top producers in the industry. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all. Well, this is great to be here. Welcome uh, to everybody, and thank you for just providing such wonderful host uh, f host uh, opportunities for us all here to be able to talk about Kangen Water. Today, we have some exciting guests. We have uh, Mr. Rick Detour, who just flew in from Virginia. Rick is a horse owner and a pet owner, and we're going to have some very interesting things to say. And right here in Southern California, we're very honored to have Jeff Jensen. Jeff and I have been friends now for a, a, a short but intense time, and I'm just amazed at his body of knowledge about animals, about dogs, about horses, and anything about performance and nutrition. So, Jeff, thanks very much for coming as well. Thank you, Neil. Okay, and Rick, thanks so much for coming. Oh, my pleasure to be here. Great. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what it was that was of interest to those people who are drinking Kangen water who might have some pets and what possible benefit they might derive from putting that bowl of water down for their dogs and their cats, etc. And then, then we'll get to some larger animals as well. So uh, why don't I start with Jeff, if I may. Jeff, you've had uh, long experience with dogs, as I remember. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, tell, they, were, they were my brothers and sisters. Uh, tell, tell people a little bit about, <laughs> about you and your, your background on that. My father and, and mother actually bred dogs, Salukis. My father imported them from England back uh, in the late 40s and started his kennel here in the United States, where you know I grew up with probably... Uh, between 40 and 60 dogs um, as my playmates, and uh, that's what I did all day, every day, wow. when I wasn't in school and playing sports. And then I went off to uh, college and went into what it amounted to be sports medicine. I, mm -hmm. I did a lot of pre-vet, but basically all I did was prepare myself for what I do today, which is practice sports medicine type alternative therapies and nutrition. What led you to be interested in, in uh, applying your skills to animals? Well, A, I enjoy working with uh, with the animals. I love seeing them perform. Salukis were quite athletic and have a running style much like horses. My uncle, who was a large animal vet, I worked a lot at the racetrack in uh -huh. my childhood. So I kind of got inspired by the racehorse, and I looked for natural ways to enhance my own sports performance and took those very things to uh, the racetrack in the uh, late 70s, early 80s where I did a lot of sports therapy there for over 20 years, getting a lot of experience. Wonderful. And you did some uh, training, did you not, in school as well for the uh, nutrition, medicine, etc.? Uh, did you have some idea that maybe you'd don the white coat yourself and be one of those guys with the stethoscopes? I looked at becoming, uh, do, going to vet school. It was a little tough in the 80s, or excuse me, in the 70s. It was uh, pretty competitive uh, to get in, and I think I was more interested in uh, my own sports activities back then. I leaned towards learning everything I could about uh, human physiology, animal physiology, um, studied everything that I could possibly could in school. I had quite a few... Uh, extra credits in organic chemistry, um, physiology, cardiophysiology. If I could study about performance, I did. And I pretty much kept that up 
and then basically didn't apply any of that until I got a chance to start working with therapy modalities, um, which I sold and trained doctors and physicians, chiropractors, osteopaths, and how to use electromodalities in the late 70s and early 80s. My real passion was the horses, and I got a chance to do that, and That's off great. I went. That's great. And, and uh, when did you uh, come across Kangen Water? Well, I'd started a uh, nutrition company because I felt the horses weren't doing too well. I was, you, you work on the horses and you work on the horses with therapies and they just aren't responding fast enough. So I looked at their diets and it was pretty apparent to me that they weren't eating as well as most of our two-legged athletes. So I tried using lots of different supplements with them and they seemed to all work. So basically I got into a field of probiotics and enzymes. My studies led me to getting exposed to water and the importance of water, and I just felt that there was something wrong with it for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, we see the horses are very dehydrated, and their water is pretty suspect. And then back in September 2008, mm -hmm. I got a de demonstration by uh, somebody from Kangan, and I was absolutely mesmerized by the information that I heard, and I saw immediately that trying to supplement and do therapy was, was not going to work we had to change their water. Right, so these horses might have even been drinking water, but still you saw them as being dehydrated. Is that correct? Absolutely. Dehydrated, having problems with absorption and utilization. Water, of course, is that universal medium. You know, it's a lot more than wet inside the animal. And I thought that Gangan technology was not only advanced and matured and tried and proven, but could deliver far more of what was lacking than the best of nutritional programs. Sure, we'll get into some specifics, but generally, can you tell us uh, here how the horses did respond to drinking Kangen water? It's pretty funny. Even now, several of the horses actually consider it a treat. Our first exposures, we offered them a bucket of their regular water, yes. and we took them in a fresh bucket of the Kangen water, and they would jump into it like uh, a perennial duck to water, and they would drink every drop and even rattle their buckets as if it was a grain treat. Pretty soon the horses would recognize us and start weaning as soon as we'd walk into the stable area. So they, they generally had a very strong preference for Kangen water. And Jeff, in your experience, would a horse do that just to please you? Well, certainly there's a little conditioning aspect because, you know, they're happy for some attention. But uh, they do seem to show, as any good trainer will tell you, you watch to see those grain buckets to make sure every last grain is gone. That means their appetite's good. If they leave something, it means something may be amiss. They, they didn't really like it. They were hungry. Well, when you see that with a water bucket and you haven't seen that before, something's different. Right. And when you take them two water buckets, that's 10 gallons of water. And they drink all at 10 gallons of water. It was more than just thirst. It was something they missed. And then we saw this with our own Salukis, who are desert dogs over in Arizona, did the old Kangen and tap water test. Sure enough, within a few days, they preferred the Kangen down in the house. But when put out all day, they wouldn't drink all day long. And they would wait and to, to drink the Kangen water when they came down in the afternoon. So I go, Mom, you got to carry some water up there for the dogs in the day, which wasn't a very popular idea. but. Uh, it did point out they have a strong preference. So those dogs were discerning dogs. Very they discerning. They would not be taken by non-Kangan water. <laughs> they had to go for that Kangan. Yeah, no placebo effect no there. No placebo <laughs> effect. The dog was not doing that to please you. No. Uh, Rick, you've, uh, you've uh, been a horse owner and a pet owner and aficionado for quite a while. You want to give us a little of your background with regard to uh, animals? Well, I started growing up with a uh, racing stable, and horses have been part of my life, uh, irregardless of what I wanted them to or not. I grew up with 20 to, to 50 horses that I was responsible for taking care of, probably from the point I was about six years old until all the way through college. And when I had my children, I constantly told them, I do not want to be getting up four in the morning, five in the morning to go take care of horses. And I also told them, I said, if we're going to have a horse, we're going to lease it. We're not buying horses. Well, at this point, I own quite a few horses, and the kids have become very competitive on them. It's uh, part of your life. They become family members. These are high-performance horses that have some very specific, very difficult tasks to do in the world of eventing, and it's a significant part of your life. Tell us a little bit about your horses. I understand you have two that I know about. Uh, tell us about those two horses. 
Well, we have two horses that compete in the eventing world under the United States Eventing Association in the United States, uh, USEA and USEF. They are a part of the uh, Young Rider program, part of the program where um, uh, one horse was ridden by one of the junior equestrians, double gold medalist, currently on the uh, shortlisted on the uh, U.S. equestrian team right now in the eventing world, a horse named Riverkeeper. He was 2007 Thoroughbred of the Year. And that is not on the racetrack, but wow. so a horse that had been on, the, you know, had, had started initially recognized by the American Jockey Club. And he is a horse that came from the track and then took on a second career, which is the eventing side of it, and has uh, received high recognition. So he's quite the horse for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you have another one as well? And the other one is uh, a horse that took some young ladies, from 12 year old and 13 year old uh, young ladies, and took them into uh, nationally recognized competitions and did very, very well on circuit for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you uh, come across Kangan Water? Well, I actually did as a result of, I found myself drinking far too many sodas, and it was brought to my attention how acidic they were, and I just felt I didn't have the energy on a daily basis. I found, you know, getting into the evenings, I was uh, extremely worn out, find that, you know, get around 9 o'clock at night, that I just couldn't go on any further, and it was it was bothering me because I'm in a high-tech field, and I like to be able to work, you know, around the clock if I can, and I just felt something was significantly wrong, knew I needed to get off the sodas, and I started drinking a lot of the different bottled waters, only to find out that they were highly acidic. And I uh -huh. uh, was started thinking there was a, m a much bigger, more significant medical problem underlying. And started to drink the uh, Kangen water and mm -hmm. almost within you know a couple of days started to feel the difference and started having energy, found myself able to sleep through the night, found myself more refreshed. And being in technology, I'm the type of person who always doubts everything until I really significantly prove it. And I knew the result I was getting. And it was pointed out that the same positive results could be seen in the dogs. The dogs I have are collies. And the collies okay. have uh, have a tendency to, to, to carry a um, or not have a gene, which uh, it causes them to absorb medications, drugs into the body. So, if, you know, for example, if, you're, if you go and put the dog under and you're, you know, you give them a certain type of uh, drug to do that, you have to do half, which you normally do with a dog. And so you find that these dogs constantly have either some kind of condition where you know, low energy or problems or, you know, and, and we wondered if they were reacting to the water. So we started, you know, we changed their water, yes. uh, put the Kangen water down for them, and we found the same the same thing that uh, Jeff was saying is that the the dogs were going and drinking twice as much water. That they, you know, so as fast as you put a bowl of water down, they were consuming the entire bowl of water. And the condition of the dogs started to drastically change. And we're talking one dog that's two years old. The other one is a seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. And expected to see a little more in a seven-year-old, but we were seeing the same types of effect even on the two-year-old. And what kind of effects were those, Rick? Well, by far more energy. We also saw that they were actually craving the water. It's like putting a treat down, and they would go over, and and, and I would say that you know the, the volume of water they're taking in is, is two to three times than the amount that they were taking in previously. Now, we would take the dogs out on the walk, and we'd find them. They'd become lethargic, didn't want to continue on the walk. We started to find that the dogs far more energy. Not only were they pulling as you left the house, you know, to, to begin their walk, they were pulling coming back to the house. And then they were actually, they were expecting the uh, water as fast as, as soon as you turn the machine on, as fast as you put that water down, the dogs are right over there. And, and I used to fill their bowls up with all kinds of bottled water because I, I never really trusted the water coming out of our um, um, well system. Mm -hmm. And putting water down for them previously, never really any interest. Now it's actually, it's almost a demand from the dogs to have it. Good. So you've seen a lot of improvement on their physical condition. Uh, have you seen other things with their coats or anything like that? Uh, just, you know, overall healthier, by far uh, more interested, more energetic. You know, and see the same thing with the horses as we started to, to give the water to the horses. We would start to find the same thing that we were talking about here earlier is that they are very interested in drinking all the water. It's just, it's just like feeding time now with, with water. They're very used to, you know, putting grain in the bucket and the horses, you know, very interested in getting it, you know, in a scramble to get in their stalls and a scramble to get their, get their nose in the bucket to start eating. It's the same way with the water. And I've not seen anything like that with a horse. I mean, uh, 50 years experience with horses. I haven't seen anything like that. You know, I'm very used to horses, the actions, you know, reactions to treats and everything else but you know water is almost you put it in there and, and they have uh, almost a complete disinterest and so you and Jeff are kind of like horse whisperers huh you really can read these horses and you can see a big difference with how they react to this water Jeff is that that resonate with you as well 
Absolutely. The horses have responded extremely well to the water. They seem to be more focused, more relaxed. Even just watching them at normal gates, they seem more fluid. They seem to have more endurance. Their whole program is moving forward all the time instead of all those little starts and stops that you normally have. They handle more challenges with greater ease. We've had some younger horses and some older horses, and they seem to both fall into the same nice easy to train syndrome. And these are thoroughbred horses off the racetrack. So they've got histories and they have some infirmities, but those heal right up, which is a, a general characteristic. On some of these older dogs, we've seen the same thing. Their arthritis seems to ease up, if you would say. Their energy levels and almost their intelligence and, and everything seems to actually go up. They seem more inquisitive and interested and happier. And uh, what we know about the effects of the water with the digestive system, I think that that all goes hand in hand. Well, I'm curious about something you said there, Jeff, because you're an expert in performance. Would you say that uh, overall the performance level of these thoroughbreds is, has risen as a result of drinking Kangen water? Absolutely. I would put this right there with the better effect than some of these medications that we're having to replace here. It has almost a steroid or muscle growth effect. It increases the rate of recovery. It decreases some of the soreness aspects because those tissues can be hydrated, oxygenated, and you know they get buffering minerals that the water provides. All those things are acting at once. And, you know, with, that, with this water is microclustered, it's absorbed six times faster. I mean, these are dramatic differences. The amount of oxygen tenfold per pH. You know, you're drinking tap water at eight and you're giving a horse a nine and a half pH alkaline water. And, you know, there's several hundred times more available oxygen. Now, if we're talking about that horse getting 10 gallons of Kangen water a day, that's an enormous amount of antioxidants and mineral buffers and microclustered water. That, that's a big change. Dogs, of course, are much smaller by weight. So, you know, as, as Rick was mentioning, when you start seeing them increase their drinking habits by two or three times, that has an incredible metabolic change on them in terms of their, their blood being able to carry oxygen. The active hydrogen in the water is actually part of the Krebs cycle, which is part of our whole energy production. You know, these are the things that, you know, are some of those exotic drugs that have been used over the years. This is better than them. Wow. And you, have you seen this replacing all these drug therapies that have been pushed on these thoroughbreds? Well, I'd like to see it be used that way. Mm -hmm. I think that it can do that. I don't think there's any question that in a 30-day comparison that they will actually produce these kinds of results consistently over time. And the nutritional increases are going to be great. There was a study on the dairies over in Japan and the milk production, they switched over from their tap water into Kangen water. Milk production immediately, within the first two weeks, went up 28%. Wow. The quality of the milk improved. The maturation rate of the calves and the increased dramatically. They gained weight on the same amount of feed. Their coat condition and skin condition both improved. They had increased mineralization and stronger legs, which is a big problem in dairy cattle. So the standing of, for, was much easier for them in the stall. So I kind of think that, you know, how does that come? Well, there's such a high ionized mineral content of Kangen water that I think that it served to actually replace their mineral supplements. And that's what they found. Wow. They have less inflammation. And again, that's probably attributed to the antioxidant effects, less disease. They had chicken farms, similar kinds of results, except with eggs, and again, considerably less death and longer production lives of both the chickens and the dairy cows. Less utter infections, of course, in the milking operation, and this is what it's amazing, very little to no smell in a dairy. Now, of course, we could attribute that to and relate it to some of the studies in, that Dr. Shinya has given us about uh, human patients and how they're able to clean up their intestinal tracts. And if you look at the properties of the water, you can see how it actually benefits the digestive system immensely. And I think now we take that back to the horses and the dogs. You're dramatically increasing their nutrient absorption and utilization rate right. far in excess of what you can 
provide to them in a supplement or a pill. Right, and I hope everyone listening here understands that we can directly apply these to ourselves as well. Jeff is the one who has studied human performance as well. So that when we talked about those cows standing around, it could be me too, just standing around or sitting down at my desk behind a computer, and uh, and, and those creaks and, and groans, etc., just uh, get diminished. In fact, Rick, you have a 19-year-old, is it 19-year-old horse, Raider? Oh, he's actually 21 years old, and you can uh, you can look him in the eye, and y- you can just see more attention to him. It's um, everybody has a hard time believing his age. It's his energy, his his attention, everything is. And like I said, it, seeing is believing. I would have been the first one to tell you this. I could understand water being purified and not having any sedimentation in it, and any other types of fertilizer, or anything else that might have leached its way into the uh, well system, but. This is believing, and I've not seen anything this significant in my entire life. The, the performance difference, the attention, the ability to get out there and, and act like a horse half its age is phenomenal. So it's not just what's not in the water. It's what the water does in terms of being powered up that's really helped this horse. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Okay. It's, uh, it's not just a filter. It's not just cleaning the water. It's it's the combination of everything else that this particular product does. Right. And uh, you said at some point in time when I believe it was, um, and this is uh, my recollection, when you were taking a left turn with, with Raider, sometimes there would be some sensitivity, some delicacy, some hesitation. Now, it wasn't more than a week or two after drinking the water what happened. Well, he had had an injury as a yearling, and he always had a little trouble bending to the right. So if you were were doing dressage, they were always having trouble to get him to go on the proper lead. Uh, We found that, you know, his... His, his ability to do jumps, his ability to go on the lead, it's, it's almost as though that area that's always plagued him has just been removed. There's a dramatic increase in his ability to do it. I mean, it's in the past you would give him some butte and different things if he, he, if he was, you know, heavily in work. The need to do that now is completely gone. So that was a drug that no longer has to be inserted into this horse. Not at all. I haven't, haven't used it in months. And, Jeff, that makes you smile, doesn't it? Absolutely. You're looking into the water and the technology that went into actually developing it. You know, it is more than just zapping it with electricity or some other simple little process, adding some bicarbonate minerals to it to shift its alkaline. It actually alters the function of the water. Um, you know, there's a natural cycle of evaporation, um, condensation, freezing. Water is stored in our glaciers and on top of our mountaintops where it filters down through the mountains and picks up minerals and has become ionized and charged with an antioxidant charge, particular ionized minerals. And it also is in these little micro clusters for greater absorption. And all of those properties are together are what makes this water beneficial. And unless we have access to those high mountain range springs, we have limited access anymore. Well, when you see that this technology has recreated that and our ability to provide that to not only ourselves, but our animals on a daily basis, I think that becomes very, very significant. Wow. Well, thanks for that analysis. One thing I want to do, I want to switch gears just a little bit and talk about the application of other aspects of the water to the horse. And I'm thinking the topical things, and both of you I know have had experience with what the the machine does in terms of the other waters. So, Jeff, you want to start with what some of the other waters do for the horse? Well, I understand the horse industry having been in it in my entire life, and I know that the first approach we had to do, rather than go out and make performance claims and, and try to go that route, there's a lot of competition in that regards. But uh, I saw the greatest benefit in its ability to reduce costs. As we know, horses and even dogs are pretty rambunctious sorts and are always getting themselves into trouble, and that trouble always costs us a lot of money. Injuries, uh, cuts, bruises, infections, obviously internal problems, all of those things are addressable by one of the kinds, seven kinds of water that are produced out of the Enagic Kangen machine. From the acidic, very acidic water, the 2.5, which has tremendous antiseptic benefits. All of our common staphs infections, strep infections, fungus infections, 
external allergies are easily addressed with a 2.5 Kangen water. We've seen some really dramatic results on some horses with flesh wounds and how fast they actually heal just using the Kangen water. Mm -hmm. um, no chemicals, no anything. Mm -hmm. You can feel free to treat a horse as a first aid or as a follow-up procedure, you know, subsequent to surgery, castration, quite a few other of the common surgeries out there. Where I really see a big benefit is in the antifungal, antibacterial application to horses' feet and dogs' dermatitis. Very big problems out there that are difficult to deal with. But uh, soaking those horses' feet in the 2.5 for about 15 to 30 minutes, which is a common practice, will do wonders for the growth and cleaning up of those types of fungus mm -hmm. and other abscesses, quarter crack, things which are very difficult to heal. It really gives us a big new tool there, and that's a big cost. I always found in the barns that 80% of the cost is borne in 20% of the horses because 20% are almost always injured. Rick, and does that, uh, re forgive me one second, Jeff, does that resonate with you that, uh, that these, the costs of taking care of these horses could be tremendously reduced by the uh, application of Kangen waters, uh, different waters? Well, I know we've had a uh, problem with thrush with one of our horses, and it's and it's just been chronic. And it's, uh, you know, we've we've used just about everything on the market, and we went with the two point five, and we did actually had the horse stand in the bucket for fifteen minutes, and from there just went to do a, a spray. So we just constantly, you know, every other day would continue to spray that, wash that out, and have a routine of having them stand in the bucket again. And I can tell you, I can know as soon as I pick the uh, horse's hoof up whether there's a smell there or not. It's the first time I can tell you that mm -hmm. something significantly has knocked that thrush out. And like I said, we've been through everything. So that's been really the extent on um, on anything that we've had to deal with the horses, fortunately. But... Uh, I can see the application for everything from just washing, baiting the horse, washing the horse. You know, I, I, I watch so many horses where you watch, you know, shampoo that's still in, on the body and everything else. I would say that I'm able to wash them, also cleaning any of the cuts, scrapes, um, you know, things that they have uh, that happen on a daily basis. I'm sure you would get the same benefits that I've seen with the uh, the 2.5. In summer the coming up, you have the uh, all the insect bites, etc., uh, and you'll be uh, applying it to those as well. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Jeff, uh, anything else to add on the uh, topical? I, th I think you've uh, you noticed some um, some changes in the hair follicles, even uh, so that might be interesting for people who want to show their horses. Well, all soaps are essentially alkaline, so again, the water has multiple uh, settings, so we can set it up there in the nine five to eleven point five, and it's actually better than soap. It won't strip the skin of the natural sebum, which uh, is a protective coating on the, the cells, and it won't deposit or leave any chemicals, um, you know, in the mane and tail, which are always hard to rinse. In certain other areas, you know, we'll get a kind of a chronic. Uh, um, itchiness to it and again because of the stripping application of most soaps well with the the kangen water the alkaline water there's no stripping effect and then we can rinse with the uh, 5 5 6.0 water which of course restores the ideal ph of the skin and hair for both strength and cleanliness and it actually repels dust so you know if you've groomed a few horses you know that that's an important issue you know those tails are quite beautiful when they're nice, long, and clean, but when they get dirty, they're a mess, and they attract a lot of dirt, and, and then it gets brittle if you use a lot of the popular products today. Well, you can eliminate all of those products. That's huge. And I also believe you can eliminate a lot of the, the hoof dressing products that are actually drying versus controlling. So, you know, it becomes a protective grooming aid, and then, of course, applied internally. You know, that's where the real beauty and performance of that horse come from. And, of course, it also prevents the allergies that you see on the outside. So with all-in-one, that machine is inside and outside a tremendous boon to horse owners, and I, I think it, you would also apply that to, uh, to other animals as well. Well, you know, I was just sitting here thinking, you know, and, it, and, I, and I really didn't put it together. When we've been washing the one horse uh, with a kang water, and, I, and I'd have to say, as we're discussing this, there used to always be rain rot that, that you could feel on the horse's leg. And it also would constantly have almost like a sweet itch where they, you know, scratch themselves, you know, they back into the back of the stall and scratching their tail. And you go look at the tail, and, and there'd be significant loss of hair where they're just really rubbing it off the dock area and... 
the tail is grown out as full as I've ever seen. And I'd have to say, we're seeing effects here that are not even putting together, but it's um, obviously having a benefit. You know, one of the things uh, we find with our Kangen water is that you sometimes have to remind people that the improvements that they see are a result of the water. Because they think, oh, it's just natural. This just happened. Isn't it wonderful? Take it for granted. You take it for granted. You don't realize that that plumed hair was because the horse is not so irritated. Would you not agree, Jeff? That's probably what's going on there. The water is just being restored to its natural state. And when it's in its natural state, the body can do what it knows how to do. There's actually studies showing the water hydrating the connective tissues, um, actually going in there and working with the DNA and protecting the DNA from antioxidant, but also enabling it to accurately duplicate itself, so to speak, regenerate. So it's like a restoration, recover, right? It? And mm -hmm. without that process, without that water, how can those those process actually work? I mean, that's been our big issue here. You know, trying to, an animal that's dehydrated is not going to recover very quickly. An animal that is acidic is not going to recover very quickly. We know a couple of Nobel Prize um, awards were, were granted for recognizing that disease doesn't grow in alkaline, oxygen-rich tissue. So in a dehydrated, acidic animal, whether it's because of overperformance or dehydration or bad feed or bad day or whatever, then that animal is compromised. When we remove that compromise, both flushing the toxins, adding at rich sources of antioxidant and hydrating all at the same time, the body is going to do its job. Well, this sounds very exciting because to me it sounds like uh, pet owners and uh, horse owners and dog owners and cat owners, we don't want to forget our cats, all can be benefited by this water and it creates a, uh, a environment for the pet to feel better, uh, ability to restore itself. And for particularly on the horse side, we're talking about reducing costs, reducing vet bills, reducing the need for extra medication or even supplements, would you not say, Jeff? Well, in danger of hurting my own business, which of course is uh, I make some advanced supplements, but I've actually told my own clients that they can cut their bill in half if they add king and water to their program. Well, there you go. There you go. So... Um, I believe that you can pretty much eliminate most of the anti-inflammatory and joint lubricant products because there's no question that the water adds a very significant dimension to that whole flexibility arthritis issue. And we love our vets and we do want our vets to see our animals and to have a wonderful relationship with them as well. It's just that the care that we're giving them on the pure water side and the powerful water side can be such a good natural adjunct that we have a lessened need for the medications that have been prescribed at some times. And maybe that's a, that's a boon to all of us, would you say? Well, I believe that it's a real adjunct for the veterinarian because it's less of him having to clean up a mess, going back a second time for a reinfection, and it allows him to practice preventative and performance and enhancing medicine rather than this go fix something that was already ran there once and now it's got reinfected, now it's gone to a different level. It allows the owner to be more productive and instead of having to rely totally on medicine all the time for every little thing that happens in the barn, he can address these things quickly and call the vet for the important issues and they can focus on those. And I think that, you know, in this, these economic times, I think that's essential, whether you, you have a cat or a dog, a parakeet, you know, we have to control those unnecessary costs. And having things get infected and having minor things become big things because we didn't have a first aid available that was um, safe and sane um, is, to me, very, very important for the soundness of the entire industry you know, and the pleasure of owning our pets. I mean, we who wants a, a dog that's that's obese and a real problem? I mean, we love them to death, but, you know, we want to have fun with them, too, and we like to see them bounce around sure, and, we, and not have to take insulin and some things that I think are, are a real crazy symptom of th something's wrong in our feeds and our programs. And, and I think that's why if we start with Kangen water, 
we're going to have a big step forward. Sure. And Rick, you're in a uh, very high, well, let us call it uh, conservatively, a high rent district there in Virginia with uh, a lot of extremely um, well-to-do horse owners. Do you think uh, for them it makes a difference for their barns as well not to be spending this extra money on vets? Oh, absolutely. You look at the industry right now, and it's probably more significantly affected by this downturn in the economy. Uh, people making decisions not to go to events, people actually postponing veterinary calls. The problems are becoming worse, the horse is remaining lame. So I think, I'm, I can tell you, I'm positive that these benefits really make the difference between an industry right now that, you know, in the eventing side, that's really strained to one that you can go back and have happy, healthy horses and, uh, and save significant cost. Great. Let's talk about some issues that have been of concern to a lot of people. For example, you know, the U.S. is known as the most obese country in the world. And, you know, that reflects back down on our children and our pets as well. And there's a lot of uh, obesity among pets that uh, that's kind of disturbing to us all. Um, how would you react to that, Jeff? And what would you think uh, could be done? Well, interestingly, I've seen some studies using genetically predisposed mice, and they tried to induce diabetes in these mice, but they couldn't do it in the mice that were getting Kangen water. So it has a real powerful effect, almost an insulin-like effect, and in controlling diabetes and weight gain. And we know that acidic diets, as in a carnivorous diet of a cat and a dog, are going to produce lots of extra acids. Now, how are they supposed to get rid of those acids? And what happens to those acids if they don't? Well, they're stored as fat. And I think that's these two issues together, this insulin insensitivity, which is the precursor to diabetes, the poor nutritional quality of food, and this acidic buildup are all one in the same, whether it's two or four-legged. So we've seen the benefits in quite a few people that we know losing weight, just drinking the water. And we can relate that, it, well, it might be the antioxidant benefits, it could be the hydration benefits, it could be the detoxification benefits, even the mineral benefits. Maybe it's all of these things. And if we see those same things in our animals, and unfortunately we are seeing a high rate of obese dogs, cats, and even horses. And I think it boils back to poor nutritional quality choices and this dehydration issue and accumulation of acids. So I think we have a, a way to control those things and make better choices, and it's as simple as drinking Kangen water. So you have better diet, you have a little bit more exercise, but you're saying the Kangen water can make a huge impact on that. Whether you're mixing uh, feed for your horse, your dog, or making soup, if you don't start out with good water, I don't care what you add to it, you're not going to come out with very good soup. So by having better water, I think it gives you better choices, and you can see better benefits down the road with well, that, your dogs, your horses, your cats, well, so forth. That, that's a good observation. Thank you. And uh, when you're talking about cats, let's just turn to cats just for a moment now. What are some of the problems that are out there, and how can they be affected? I know, Rick, you uh, mentioned that you'd seen your neighborhood. What kinds of uh, problems with cats, and, and maybe we can talk about how Kangen can apply to help them? Well, the only thing I know is just from taking care of the neighbor's cats, you know, go over there and you, you go to do them a favor, and, and then the next thing they're doing is giving you syringes because you need to inject their cats because they have diabetes. And I actually kind of uh, <laughs> go over to do a little favor and ends up, you know, you're, you're becoming MD for the weekend. So it's, it's kind of throw that to Jeff because it seems like to me this would be, with the kind of benefits that I'm hearing about and talking about, it seems like it would be the, uh, the natural solution to uh, solving part of that problem. Well, you know, again, cats have a higher fat diet in general. Most of the commercial feeds that are made for cats are, tend to be higher in fats. And we know that the older the fats get, the more rancid or free radical producing they are. Most of the studies I've heard pretty much say that diabetes is a free radical oxidation disease. Um, the body is overloaded with free radicals that attacks the cells, the insulin producing cells, and also desensitizes the actual insulin hormones. So we have a real problem with the creation of diabetes. So again, if the water can help mediate that by acting as a free radical control mechanism as a tremendous antioxidant, also several of the minerals that are contained in the Kangen water also have a powerful effect 
and beneficial effect on that. So there's a lot of things that work together there in that synergy to help those cats and those dogs in diabetes. So Rick, it would seem to me that would be an absolute ideal time to introduce the concept of Kangen water to the neighbor and say maybe this is something that can help clean out, as Jeff is saying, help clean out and, and, and stabilize that blood sugar, etc. And how would you go about doing that? Uh, I'd love to do it, and if nothing else, it would consider it selfish because I hate needles. But uh, <laughs> I'd be more than happy to supply them with water and uh, see what the benefits are. It would see that. I think it's a great idea, and I think that it, this this is a whole untapped marketplace for those of you who are listening. That there are so many people who would go out of their way to get something for their pet, their cat their dog, their horse, before they would even get something for themselves, that this might be a good way of you introducing this incredible health benefit to the pet and to the whole family. Sort of like, and I don't like to say the pun, but it's like the tail wagging the dog, isn't it? So there we go. You you agree with that, Jeff, that that would work? Well, my whole philosophy has been about teaching people about health and nutrition and fitness and exercise. It's a lot easier to talk about their animals, their horses, or their their dogs, or their cats, and tell them what's good for their pets than it is to direct that question at them and kind of pick on them. And they seem to respond better. I can tell you numerous stories that by the time I've educated somebody on what physical therapy to use on their horse, they go, well, does that work on my back or my knee? Or can I take that supplement for myself because I have the same thing? So I think it's a good way that's it's safe, it's easy for people to accept rather than they get a little bit shy about dealing with these things personally. Also, you know, horses and dogs respond four to eight times faster, metabolically speaking, than we do. So you can actually see things change before your eyes within days, weeks mm-hmm. at the longest. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell people that they're going to see benefits either from a nutritional supplement or physical therapy within two weeks, or I know I'm not going to make any money off of that deal. Mm-hmm. And I only get paid if they get better. Well, I have no qualms about offering this water to anybody for any problem that they have because they're going to see those kinds of benefits themselves. So I think that makes it a real attractive venue. And Rick, what would you say to skeptics? Is there a way that you could use this to uh, to address that? Well, it's like I said in the at the beginning here, as I have a tendency to be a very, very difficult person. I've mean, dealt in technology my entire life, and I tell you, 99.9% of what I look at on a daily basis of products being brought to me are um, junk, garbage. You know, I always refer to it as mud, made-up data, stuff that just doesn't equate to actually performance products or things really working. And I'd say having that type of background, uh, I looked at the water as skeptical as you could possibly be. Yes. And the only thing I can tell you is the results. And I have a tendency to be a type of person that, for myself, I'll neglect myself, but I will not neglect the pets, family, or anybody else. And I've always had the feeling that if you're going to own a pet, take care of the pet. And I'm happy. The reward for me is to actually see the benefits. And I'll go to whatever extreme I need to now to make sure that the animals continue to have it, continue to have the benefits that they have, and other individuals find out what it can mean to their animals and their family. Mm-hmm. But So by example, they're going to watch what you do, and they'll see for themselves. The proof's in using it. The proof's in using it. And do you, do you see any downside in any of the uses that you've done? You've, you've been pretty intense with it now for the last few months. Have you seen any downside at all with the water? Well, the way I look at it, it's water. Yes. And it's, uh, you know, everybody will say to me, I I tell them, I'm not giving you some mystery drug. You know, I'm not injecting you with something. You know, I'm not uh, suggesting that you go on some new regime. I just use the water. And it's uh, it's almost people have a a look at you that they're kind of shocked. But as as they start to drink the water... Uh, start to feel the benefits, they realize. So it's, you know, it's just like we said, the, the proof's there and how much, you know, how much better can you get as to really make sure that the water that you put in your body is uh, what the king of water is providing. And, and Jeff, have you seen any uh, risks in, uh, in, in giving this water to any of your pets or any of the pets of your clients? I think the only risk that you have is withholding the offering of the water once you have tried the water yourself. Whether you understand how it works or not, you know that it works. And if you know it works, you want to share it with other people, and you just wonder, how do I do that? And as you become 
more educated and you learn more just by going to the meetings, watching the videos, talking with other Kangen distributors. You learn an incredible amount of information in a very short period of time which eliminates that skepticism. I think skepticism is good. As Rick said, most things are mud. But water is a fundamental to life. It is a requirement of life. I mean, that's how mm -hmm. we predict if mm -hmm. there's extraterrestrial life. Water is the missing element. Yes. And as we find that it becomes that first little hydrogen ion that Kangen water is so rich in that supplied that little spark of life. Well, here it is. We can get it in buckets full. Well, we all like to watch TV, but very few of us know how to remote control works. We certainly don't know how the new big plasma LED, LCDs, o OEDs, whatever the heck they are, screens work, but we like to watch them and we want the result. Well, how simple is it? Drink the water. Drink the water. That's all we ask anybody to do. If you're the biggest skeptic in the world, great. Drink the water and tell me it doesn't work. That's great. And, that's, and, you not know, often, that's not asking much. I agree with you. It's, it's water and it shouldn't, right? Would you not agree it should not be terrifying to people, Rick? What I find amazing is, you know, when I look at animals and look at people, you know, they'll go to big extremes to make sure that what they're eating is absolutely, you know, it's got to be this, got to be that, has this nutrient. With horses, I watch people that, that will ship all the special diet with the horse and everything else. Zero concern on what they're consuming water-wise, where the water comes from, what the water is, zero thought. So it amazes me that this is so greatly missed. And I tell them, I was like, well, why do you bother even packing the food and shipping the food with them? Why don't you just go eat out of the dumpster when you get there? Because it's effectively what you're doing with the water. And when they start thinking about it and, and you start realizing some of the most elementary elements in life, people then also, they're in shock. They get blown away by what they're neglecting. Well, you know, I'd like to draw one distinction. Uh, I, I've heard such wonderful information today, and I know that you've uh, you've all had to work hard when people are skeptical, but I, those people who go all the way out to cynicism, I'm reminded of a famous quote from Oscar Wilde, and he said, you know, a cynic is a person who knows the cost of everything, but the value of nothing. So when, you, when they're going that too far down the line, maybe there is a little bit too much heavy lifting to do. But skeptics we like because those people are willing to be convinced. They're just not ready to buy into something that's just a simple belief. And when what I'm hearing from both of you is that you just say, try the water. If you're open enough, try the water. Well, one thing that, that uh, Rick can validate, I was on the selling services end of it for over 25 years offering up various therapy modalities to the horse industry and there weren't a lot of rules on what you could and couldn't use back in the late 70s and early 80s and a lot of different devices came through there and a lot of things that we're using today came out of that early research so to speak but we're researching on horses that are running for a million dollars on Saturday and the trainers entrusting you, you have to develop a relationship over time, showing yes. that you're not going to hurt the animals. But you also have to produce. And it doesn't really matter what you're doing or how you're doing it, but that horse had to be better. And he had to go out and show everybody in the world that he was better or you were out of business. And you'd get all the blame and none of the glory. But your paycheck was, my paycheck was the fact that those horses ran and they earned, you know, I won uh, horses that I worked with, won Breeders' Cups, Olympic gold medals, World Cutting Futurities, Dressage Grand Prix, and those therapies worked. But it was always based on one principle, show me. Yes. The proof is always in the pudding. And in this case, it's drink the water. It's the simplest possible thing that you can do. We've all taken vitamins and we don't know if they work to this day. But if you drink the water, you know it works. And I can show you two tablets, one in tap water and one in Kangen water, and the one in Kangen water is dissolved in five minutes and the one in the tap water hasn't started to dissolve after 30. Now, maybe it was never the fault of the vitamin that we didn't know. Maybe it was the fact that the water wasn't doing its job. And I would suggest that that's the biggest problem today. So let's solve that problem by just sample the water. Try it. See if a lot of these problems don't disappear. That's great advice, and uh, I think this all of you who are distributors out there should understand that you have in your hands the final product of that Kangen produces, which is the water. And you have the opportunity on an unlimited basis, virtually, to give that out and to give that to people who are, as Rick says, skeptics.
and uh, let them try it on their own and let them give it to their pets because the pet is not going to hold back or it's not going to it's not going to have any placebo effect and it is going to really let you know how it's behaving and how it's improving and uh, I think that's what's really the end as again as Jeff says it's the performance it's the result and you can get that with Kangen water so Jeff tell me a little bit about how the uh, electrolysis works with regard to the machine what's in and what's out interesting question it all boils down to uh, taking the water, running it across plates, an anode and a cathode plate, two opposite charges, and the water separates into different concentrations of H, hydrogen ions, and OHs, hydroxyls. Interesting thing is that at the cathode, an extra electron joins the hydrogen, and that gives it the ability to donate what's called active hydrogen. Well, active hydrogen is actually one of the byproducts of photosynthesis. It's important to the Krebs cycle. It is the currency of energy. It is the currency of life. It also has the ability to donate that free electron and neutralize free radicals, much like superoxydismatase, our, and, which is our anti-aging biomarker enzyme within our bodies, many thousands of times more potent than vitamin C. So it's an antioxidant. It has alkaline or acid benefits. Again, when it's water is electrolysis, electrolyzed, it splits. So the water device is always producing two kinds of water, acid or alkaline. Electrolysis water ionizes the available minerals to much more bioavailable minerals. So minerals actually give its pH benefits, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and calcium. But they're ionized minerals, meaning that they are very, very bioavailable. They help stabilize the oxygen. Oxygen can be in the acid format, can be an oxygen singlet, which is a free radical capable of killing bacteria and microbes. Or as a stabilized molecule or element, it is available for oxygenating tissues and to be used for production of energy. So much like a hyperbaric chamber, but that water, that oxygen has to be absorbed into the water of the body and distributed. Well, here it is in the Kangen water. And again, you choose whether you have the acid water or the alkaline water. Other benefits is that electrolysis that's occurring on those plates, those titanium platinum plates that are unique to uh, Enagix devices, for a long enough period of time for those hydrogen atoms to change their bond angles become stronger that extra electron causes those molecules to attract and they form the crystals that ice crystals snowflake crystallized structures they actually link together and perform what's called a flexible crystal mm -hmm. and if you ever wash your car and I'm a real aficionado of cars if you take normal water like on a wax surface, it'll bead. If you right. take Kangen water and put it on, then it'll sheet. Well, that's the connectivity mm -hmm. of the structured water. Mm -hmm. Now, that's very important because that structure, that lattice, crystal lattice, stores the active hydrogen for release in the body. Plants, some plants can do that. We call them antioxidants and some other uh, sources as well. But here we have a rich source, and that's why we need structured water to deliver the quality antioxidant water. We need the alkalinity because those, a lot of those processes work better in an alkaline state than they do in an acid state inside the body. Outside of the body, it's the other way. You want it slightly acid because that's a protective mechanism for the body. So, again, the different waters, different benefits, all created by that electrolysis process consistently and dependably by the SD501. Well, that's great. Device. Well, it gives me a lot of enthusiasm to go out now, Jeff, and wash my car, <laughs> uh, particularly with a 9.5. With just I'll, water. I'll, I'll be, it's just water. It's just water. Well, thanks so much on that explanation. Well, that's a, that's a win-win for everybody, and it's a win-win for humans drinking and using it and applying it. I'm just uh, so grateful that uh, that we can have this conversation today and talk about how this can benefit us all. And thanks so much for coming in. It will be great to see this accepted more and more. And Rick, I know you have your work cut out for you on the East Coast. 
to inform people of what this does. But I think as they see your top horses performing as they do, that will become an easier and easier conversation to have. Would you not agree? Well, I'm really a big supporter of it and always glad to see a, a happy, healthy horse. And if I can get other people to, um, to try it and see the benefits, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you look the horse in the eye within the first couple of days. You can clearly, if you know horses, you know animals, even looking at the dogs, you can see it's translating itself just by the healthy look in their eyes. And I think that if everybody else can get the same benefits I'm getting, it's a real positive. It's a win-win all the way around for everybody. And Jeff, anything else to add? Well, I think that's, I, I totally agree with Rick, that if you can look at your own dogs and cats and birds and, and horses, I mean, you know them. And if you can see a benefit in them, imagine that benefit to yourself. So, of course, we're happy to them. Imagine Excellent that point. benefit to your family Excellent and the point. other people that you know that you can help just by presenting the idea of drinking better water. And, you know, my hat's off to Enagic and all the people, yourself, Neil, Danny Dermacali, some of the other execs in the company, for enabling us all to bring this message and take it out to the people. Gentlemen, thank you for a great and phenomenal event. You know, I really believe what we covered today will help distributors not only with the business, but also understand why the Kangen water works. Well, this is Daniel DeMacaulay, and I hope to see all of you at another Straight Talk event.